Hi, this is Tim with Shop Tour Reviews. Stick around in a few moments. We're going to be discussing installing, setting up, and starting up Ingersoll Rand's R Series Rotary Compressor. This is the Ingersoll Rand R4i Rotary Compressor. Now this is part of their R-Series line, which is available from 5 horsepower, which is what this is, all the way up to 15 horsepower. Now in addition to just being a typical R-Series Rotary Compressor, it's also part of their total air system, which basically means it has some added filtration to it, so it conditions the air. So the air leaving this compressor, the air leaving this tank is good enough to paint cars with, is good enough to use for any of your air tools. It's not going to have moisture in it. It's not going to have oil in it. It's going to be nice conditioned air. Now we'll get into the details in that at a later time, but this is part of their total air system they call their TAS unit. Now, the thing is, with an R-Series compressor, you can get this without the total air package. But what makes it nice about it is if you do get it with their total air system, everything comes in the box, if you will. You've got your compressor system, and you've got your tank below, as well as you've got your total air system down here on this end, which is going to be doing conditioning of the air, drying the air, as well as filtering the air. Now let's talk about initial installation. When we got this, it was shrink wrapped, had all the wrappers around it with cardboard protecting everything, and we unwrapped it. And then the first thing we had to do was put it in place. It weighs in at about 800 pounds, so it took a little finagling to actually get it in place, but we got it there, and the first thing we needed to do was to run electrical. One of the great things about the R-Series is you can get it in single phase or three phase power in 208 volt, 230 volt, or 460 volt. Now we opted for single phase 230 volt. So with the 230 volt single phase power that we have, we ran a 50 amp breaker at the box and then ran seal type with number eight AWG wire. And we ran the wire to the compressor, which is only about three or four feet. And then basically all we had to do was hook up to L1 and L3 and then hook up our ground. Now let's look at some of the internals of the R4i. So we're going to open it up with a nice little key that we got from Ingersoll Rand. This works on your compressor, so make sure you keep that handy. So you can see our wire set up down there where we've got our 8-3 wire coming in. And I don't know if you can see that, but you see our third leg actually tied off there. And it's, uh, it's a wire tied and electrical tape and then zip tied out of the way. But our other two legs of power are run into L1 and L3, as you see there. And then the ground is run to the ground lug. Now that's really all the wiring that you need for the 230 volt single phase power. Removing the panels is easy with your key, so you can get into any areas that you need to access. Uh, make sure you're not accessing this, obviously, when it's running or when, when under power. Uh, but basically here, basically you got your five horsepower electric motor here, you've got your rotary compressor here, so your rotary on this side, and then you've got your oil and cooling here. Uh, we've also got the coolant filter here and the oil filter here. Now one thing you'll notice is all these lines are stainless steel braided Teflon lines. So you're getting leak free, you're getting durability, longevity, all that. Also one thing you'll notice where you see this fan is actually the cooling fan for the coil above it, which is where the coolant runs through there and it cools that coolant to keep this compressor cool. Now back here in the back section here, this is where our total air system is. This is where our filtration system is. And this is where it actually conditions the air, dries the air, and makes sure all that air is clean that's actually going into the tank and then leaving the tank. And so we get a nice readout here, give some, some indications, and in the owner's manual, it kind of walks you through what all these things mean and what kind of adjustments you can make on this. Now, an initial startup of the compressor, you see the arrow here. Basically, you're checking to make sure that the fan on the cooler here is actually spinning in the direction of the arrow as well as on the motor down there you see the same thing with the arrow pointing the opposite way and we're making sure that that fan on the motor is turning that way so you're getting the correct rotation of the of the fan as well as the correct rotation of the compressor now once we confirmed everything was correct we threw the breaker on we got power here at the screen and basically to turn it on you hit the green button Now right away you'll notice, you'll hear the slight hum. Now that's the actual total air system kicking on, the fan kicking on on the coolant system, and in a second the actual compressor kick on, but it's still quite silent. 
especially compared to a typical recip or piston style compressor. So I'm standing in front of the Ingersoll Rand R4i as it's running, compressor's running, coolant system is running, filtration system is running, and it's got a nice hum behind me, but definitely nothing like a reciprocating compressor that we're used to. So you get the nice silent treatment of the rotary compressor. So if it's in your shop area, you don't have to talk loud to talk over it. You can still have conversations and nothing's interrupting you. Maybe take phone calls or what have you. Now in this model, in the R4i, this is actually a 135 PSI compressor. So it's gonna run at 135 PSI. Now what's the difference in that in a typical recip? Well, CFM is 14.27 output on this. And it doesn't matter if that's 40 PSI, 90 PSI, 135 PSI, that's the output. So the rotary can keep up without output. So on a recip compressor, you may see a 12 CFM rating, but actually at 90 PSI, it may only be 10 CFM. So that's the difference in a rotary style compressor like the R4i from Ingersoll Rand. Now to shut this down, it's very easy to do. You see here on our interface, a red button, you can hit the button it automatically powers down the compressor. You may hear the dryer running for a few seconds and it'll shut that down as well. Uh, you wanna tend to stay away from hitting the big red button here, which is basically an emergency shut off because it may have to go into some kind of reset mode. But basically now it's shut everything down and then until we hit the green button to start it up again, we're good. So that's the initial installation setup and startup of the Ingersoll Rand R4i. Now down the road, we'll talk about maintenance, line setup, and that sort of thing. So be sure to check out the R-Series compressor from Ingersoll Rand, as well as be sure to keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Have a great day.